Hi, everybody, uh, and welcome to our webinar, Solve the Puzzle, Consent Management for FHR. I want to commend you for uh, making the effort to understand how to solve the puzzle around consent management for fast healthcare interoperability resources, resource APIs. And thank you, of course, for joining us today. Um, without question, consent management is, is one of the most important ethical and legal requirements in modern medical care. Equally important is choosing the right consent management platform. Um, if, you, if you want your consent management platform to enhance your growth and competitive edge, you want a platform that's scalable, flexible, reduces your implementation costs and takes advantage of the data your organization is already laboriously collected. Uh, the platform we'll share with you today provides just that to enable your continued growth. Uh, to better understand your needs today, we're going to run a poll, and I believe that should begin now. Okay, we're just going to wrap up our poll here in just a second. Uh, so before we begin today, uh, let me introduce uh, your presenters. Uh, my name is Michael Ruse. I'm Product Marketing Director for WSO2 Open Healthcare. Uh, Nirmal is our, w, our uh, associate director and architect, um, and Samira is our associate technical lead. Um, as our product experts, they'll be your presenters today. Next slide, please. Uh, during today's webinar, we'll introduce WSO2 consent management in healthcare. Uh, we'll review CMS interoperability and patient access final rule and consent management requirements. We're also going to provide an overview uh, of WSO2 Open Healthcare, uh, share WSO2's take on consent management, and conduct a consent management feature deep dive. And then finally, we'll give you a uh, live demo. And by the way, uh, we'll uh, answer questions after the presentation. So please feel free to post yours in the Q&A section as, as they come to mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll um, also want to let you know we will be sending the webinar recording with slides out to all attendees. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> So uh, let me provide you a little bit of context as to why we wanted to conduct today's webinar and share this information with you. Um, first, a quick introduction of WSO2. WSO2 was founded in 2005. We're a global organization experiencing rapid growth. Uh, we're now over 700 employees serving uh, 500 customers all over the world. Uh, next slide, please. So a little bit of good news, um, both Forrester and Gartner have recognized WSO2 among the leaders within our industry. And um, so uh, of course, we're very excited about that. Next slide, please. So I mentioned consent management is one of the most important ethical and legal requirements in modern me medical care, but what is consent management? and why are healthcare organizations like yours devoting resources to implementing a consent management system. In response to the 21st Century Cures Act, which was signed in 2016, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, or CMS, and the Office of, National, of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology, or ONC, have published mandates for interoperability API implementation. Um, these not only protect patients' health information, but also unequivocally put the power of consent into the hands of the patient through the use of fast healthcare inter interoperability resources or FIRE APIs. Unfortunately, um, failure to give patients control over access to their data can be costly, both in terms of potential fines and lost customers. Uh, next slide, please. Our fire compliant consent management functionality uniquely lowers the technology barriers to managing consent. 
now healthcare organizations like yours are able to streamline alliance this year and focus on digital innovation that will fuel your future growth. And so with that, um, I'd like to turn it over to our experts, Nirmal and Samira, to walk you through this new functionality. Guys, all yours. Sure. Uh, thanks, Mike. I hope you can hear me well. Yeah. Um, okay, awesome. So yeah, let's uh, look into the uh, CMS patient access final rule uh, in uh, a nutshell, and then uh, uh, let's deep dive into the concern management uh, related specific uh, rules uh, that are listed in the uh, final rule. CMS 9115F, uh, that's the final rule that was uh, released uh, last year. And uh, there are two immediate deadlines enforced on the uh, payer organizations. The first deadline is uh, on actually coming pretty soon, uh, 1st of July, 2021. Uh, the expectation is uh, for each payer organization to expose uh, two main APIs. Uh, patient access API and the provide directory API. Uh, when it comes to the patient access API, uh, the intention is to expose your claims, uh, encounter and clinical data via uh, fire uh, APIs. So you, you should basically uh, respond uh, or respond these uh, data within a, a, a one business day uh, after you receive these data. And for claims and encounter data, there's an uh, implementation guide that they've uh, you know, uh, given the uh, guidelines uh, on how a pair organization can implement these five APIs. So that's the carrying uh, IG for blue button. Uh, and for clinical data, uh, there's another implementation guide called DaVinci's Pair Data Exchange uh, and the US uh, co uh, implementation guide as well. So, Basically, through the patient access API, you are asked to expose uh, the uh, uh, the patient information, the organization details, etc. And through the provider directory API, you are basically asked to uh, expose as healthcare providers and organization's details via a set of five APIs. You have to keep them up to date within 30 days. Uh, you know, every 30 days you have to uh, keep, uh, keep those uh, data up to date. And uh, there's an implementation guide for that as well. That's the DaVinci uh, PDX uh, plan uh, implementation guide. This is a public API that, are, that uh, you've been asked to expose. Uh, you know, uh, you have to host this uh, provide directory API so that uh, anyone can query uh, these five APIs and get to know your supported uh, healthcare providers, uh, the facilities, hospitals, uh, pharmacies, etc. So when it comes to the patient access API, there are some other requirements. Uh, you have to have a proper uh, open ID connect OT2 security. You should support smart on fire specification, uh, and uh, there are requirements on consent management as well, uh, which we'll uh, talk in uh, coming slides. There's another deadline on 1st of January 2022, where, uh, okay, uh, where you, uh, as a payer organization, was is asked to expose uh, or support peer-to-peer -peer data exchange. This is essentially the same set of APIs that you have to expose, uh, but then you have to have the ability to load uh, data exposed by another payer upon a request from a patient. So uh, this is critical in a scenario where a member uh, is moving from one healthcare plan to another plan and then that particular member can request you uh, as the uh, pre previous uh, he health plan to send your send uh, members data to the new uh, health plan and uh, so as a as the previous health plan you should be exposing uh, members data through five apis 
as the new health plan, you should be able to take those uh, uh, fire messages uh, into your system and load uh, those data uh, in your system so that the member's history is preserved in your system as well. The final rule in action uh, can be depicted uh, through this diagram. Uh, so essentially what the final rule has done is it has created an application ecosystem. If you think your current uh, payer organization, uh, you have a member portal uh, where your members would come and uh, you know, see their data, see their explanation of benefits, uh, see their claims. And then basically, uh, you know, uh, that's the only operation they can uh, possibly do through the member portal. But uh, the, the member portal is provided from the payer organization itself. Now with the CMS final rule, uh, we are opening up, a, uh, you know, they are basically opening up a uh, whole new app ecosystem where third party application developers uh, third parties can build patient-based, member-based applications, uh, and uh, they can basically uh, provide, the, the members can download these apps in their mobile phones and then start accessing uh, their uh, data that are residing in different payer organizations uh, without any issue. So, this is like a transformation uh, in the current healthcare industry. So uh, this, this, we, we envision this would bring, a, uh, bring up a whole new ecosystem of applications and a new marketplace uh, concept as well. So I'll uh, briefly go through the steps uh, that uh, the rule uh, covers when it comes to, uh, when, when you start to expose these five APIs through your organization. As a third party application, you have to first register the applications in a developer portal that is exposed by the payer organization. Uh, this is the place where uh, the applications and Nirmal, Nirmal I'm sorry. To um, you broke yeah. up. Um, okay. You go back a sentences to make sure that uh, our attendees uh, are following. Yeah. Uh, so I'll start from the first step. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, I turned off my video. <laughs> um, so uh, the first step is to for the third party applications to register their applications in the developer portal. Uh, developer portal is the place where the payer organizations would expose the uh, fire APIs from, uh, and they are discoverable to any third party, uh, uh, third party uh, who are registered with the payer organization. Uh, once they are registered, they can uh, register applications and start consuming uh, these uh, fire APIs. Second step is uh, for the patients or the members uh, would come uh, to the uh, app stores and download these uh, third party applications and then uh, basically uh, start accessing uh, the data that they would need through these uh, third party applications. And the third step is when you try to uh, you know, use these third party apps, you would have to authorize, authenticate and authorize yourself as a member with the payer organization. So uh, the third party applications will redirect you to the uh, authentication and authorization server of the payer organization uh, for you to authenticate yourself and then uh, give the necessary uh, consent uh, to access your member uh, data uh, on behalf of the member. Fourth step is basically you are expressing your consent. Uh, there can be two modes where you uh, express the consent online uh, via the application login flow. And uh, if you wish, 
uh, the, uh, the pay organization can expose a member portal. Uh, through member portal, they can, they can expose a consent management uh, view where uh, the patient's members can log into the member portal in any time in the future and then uh, change uh, their concerns. And the last step is basically accessing the patient data uh, through the patient access API and showcasing them to the uh, members. So the rule uh, explicitly mentioned uh, what you have to do when it comes to the uh, uh, consent management. Uh, it's very narrow, uh, you know, uh, mainly due to the uh, uh, mainly due to the fact that there's no uh, valid uh, specification, no uh, widely adopted specification around the consent management. Uh, so the rule basically asks, uh, you know, to ask the pay organization to share the patient's data only upon a patient's request. You should share all the data as specified in the rule uh, for patient access API. Uh, there's the rule essentially says there's no way to uh, no way for a patient or a member to opt in only for a certain that data elements and not for uh, another set of data elements so you it's like an yes or a no answer you can say uh, i i want to share only these elements data elements uh, for the patient access api uh, and then uh, the industry is currently working on uh, you know, uh, researching on this area and coming up with specifications on how to do uh, consent management properly with fine-grained uh, access control, fine-grained rules and policies. So the, if uh, for some reason a patient does not want to share uh, his data with the with a third party application, it, it should not make this request from the payer organization. <clears throat> so basically on the uh, final rule and what uh, it says about the consent management. Let's quickly uh, look into the AWS to open healthcare. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, the open healthcare solution, uh, the reference architecture is uh, depicted in this uh, diagram. So as a healthcare organization, you would have uh, uh, different source systems. Uh, they can be EMRs, EHRs, like Epic, uh, Cerna, Athena Health, etc. Uh, you can have data in a traditional custom databases. You can have uh, IoT devices, wearable devices. Uh, there can be file servers, SaaS applications, HS7 servers, fire servers, claim management systems, and there can be many other <clears throat> systems as well. So as a, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, in addition to that, you can, you may uh, want to connect to different hospital systems, different uh, epic versions uh, that are deployed in different hospital systems as well. So what WS2 Open Healthcare brings is a set of connectors for you to connect to all these source systems. Uh, you can uh, connect to Epic Cern Athena Health uh, using a uh, abstracted uh, interface so that you don't have to know all the details about the IPIs, uh, but you would be presented with the abstracted interface uh, where you fill the form and then you can uh, connect to the uh, uh, EHRs. And when it comes to the other uh, so systems, uh, there are transports uh, pro uh, protocols uh, that we have written uh, so that you can easily connect to those uh, systems. Uh, once you connect to those systems, the next step in order to build an interoperable solution is to transform these data into the fire format. So we have built several fire data mappers from custom XML JSON. HS7, CCDA, H12, CPCDS, uh, ESCDI, those are the specification around the US uh, health standard. Uh, to fire format, uh, the mappers are pre-built. Uh, you can easily use them uh, through, uh, through uh, accelerators that we provide. 
And then in addition to that, there are a lot of other features as you can see in the diagram. I'm not going into uh, all the details here, but uh, on, on top of these accelerators, uh, we have uh, built a set of templates as well, uh, especially to handle the uh, CMS regulation. Uh, so there are templates around US Go implementation guide, carrying RG blue button, DaVinci, uh, etc. And once you transform your data into fire format, uh, you can basically expose them through fire server to uh, uh, you know, as fire APIs. And also if you prefer, you can expose a normal HTTP APIs as well through uh, our platform. There's API marketplace, uh, developer portal uh, around, uh, you know, in the WS2 Open Healthcare Solution that will help you to build a, a API marketplace where you expose your APIs and uh, uh, basically attract the uh, different third parties uh, and let them build new applications by leveraging your APIs. So uh, at the other end, uh, the consumers of these APIs would be smart on fire apps, uh, enterprise healthcare apps portals, uh, different payer organizations or the providers. Uh, and uh, all these will be used by the patients, members or the users uh, at the end. Uh, in addition to these, we have the observability features as well, uh, analytics, uh, API intelligence, uh, alerting uh, features built into the solution. WS2 state on the concern management is as follows. Uh, we are basically inviting you to think beyond the uh, regulatory requirements. Uh, you would, uh, you know, the reason for that is uh, when you really take a look at the CMS regulation, it invites you to expose a set of five APIs, but you, you as a payer organization can take this to your advantage and think of, you know, think out of the box and come up with new revenue streams. Uh, you, you know, when you think like that, you'd probably have to expose more and more five APIs uh, where you can uh, generate more revenue by uh, you know, uh, monetizing the data to transpose it. So once you start to expose more AP, more fire APIs uh, outside the patient access API, then you would have to have fine-brained fire data element level consent controls. Otherwise, uh, you would have to face the privacy issues uh, and uh, the uh, you know uh, authorization consent related uh, issues with your members. Uh, so the third party applications uh, that will use or leverage your APIs should not get any data other than the data elements that a patient consented to. And we believe the consents should be time bounded as a member or a patient. Uh, I should be able to tell, uh, I should be able to give my consent only for uh, three months uh, or a year, not beyond that. And the, the application should pop up uh, to me again and ask for my uh, consent uh, when that time expires. And as a patient, uh, consented applications should be discoverable to you uh, any uh, time that you wish to uh, see them. And then the granted consent should be visible uh, and should be revocable uh, through a portal uh, that you have access to. Third party application developers perspective, they should not have to worry about implementing a mechanism to collect patient consent. The payer organizations uh, authorization server should basically uh, expose uh, these uh, consent uh, related UIs uh, in a way uh, that the third party applications can easily uh, redirect uh, the patient or a member to pay organizations portal and uh, get the necessary consent. Okay, so with that, I'll uh, hand over the session uh, to uh, Samira uh, to uh, do a deep dive uh, into the uh, consent management feature of WSO2, where Samira will uh, walk us through the flows uh, that we uh, support and then uh, do a 
uh, deep dive demo as well uh, onto the features. Samir, over to you. Thank you, Nirmal. Um, so uh, let's uh, look into the uh, consent management workflow that we have leveraged when developing the consent management feature for WS2 Open Healthcare platform. So uh, we have identified uh, uh, basically four uh, flows that uh, should be covered uh, with the fire requirements. So in the identified workflow, we first have the consent administration where uh, the organizations can uh, define the consent policies and make it available uh, to their uh, application developers. So uh, the second uh, workflow step is the consent requisition uh, where uh, the application developers in the organization will be able to uh, use the defined consent policies for their applications, which will be prompted to their application users, which are basically patients and members. So in the third uh, workflow, we have the consent collection. This is also called the act of consent, where the patients and members uh, provide their consent against the consent policies that are uh, prompted uh, by the applications that they use. Uh, so the last workflow is the consent enforcement, uh, where uh, the uh, WC2 Open Healthcare server will uh, make the consent decisions based on the consents uh, that are provided by the users, and it will be enforced upon the, the uh, data shared with the applications. So uh, uh, we will go through uh, with each flow. So as the consent administration flow, uh, so this is where the organizational admins uh, define uh, the consent policies and the, the purpose of use uh, using the consents. So uh, these consent policies basically can reflect, uh, uh, it can be an organizational policy or a goal, or it can be a federal uh, regulation like uh, the CMS rule, or it can be based on a medical ethic and uh, so, so many things. So therefore there should be a way to define the uh, consent policies within the organization and manage them within this consent administration uh, flow. So we provide a separate uh, admin portal for the organizational admins to submit, uh, define uh, their consent policies and manage them within the organization. So I'll uh, briefly go through the, show you through the ad, uh, admin portal. So this is uh, where the WC2 uh, Open Healthcare uh, admin users can uh, uh, come and uh, uh, do perform uh, admin tasks such as use management, uh, workflow management, uh, and also the consent management and so on. Uh, so there's a, in this, there's a consent management section uh, where uh, the admin users will be able to define the consent policies for the organization. So as per the open healthcare server, we have the cap, we had uh, included the capability to automatically generate the, the well-known fire uh, resources based uh, consent policies uh, by this uh, fire specification. So for example, this patient data consent policy is automatically generated by the uh, open healthcare server and it will be available within the admin uh, uh, portal so that uh, this will be used for uh, accessing uh, the patient data uh, basically the patient uh, PII data based on the patient fire resource. Likewise we have generated a set of well-known fire resources based on the patient's data and also the admin users can customly uh, define the uh, consent purposes from, uh, from this uh, UI portal. So this is one of the custom uh, uh, consent uh, policy that has been defined. So likewise, 
So here we can see you can define many uh, very fine grained level uh, data attributes for an for a uh, a payload uh, that is represented in a file uh, data format. So here in this ex uh, for an example, this explanation of benefit, we have uh, defined this uh, these fields to be uh, uh, taken the consent from the uh, uh, the uh, application users. So likewise, the users uh, the admin users can define the custom consent policies uh, like that. So also we have defined. Uh, uh, already uh, defined uh, uh, the consent policy and make it available via the admin portal for the CMS uh, regulatory rule. So, which basically uh, says that the uh, it should get the consent from the user for the uh, for the uh, this data, the explanation of benefit data, the patient data, the practitioner organization, and the coverage data. So uh, this is predefined within the uh, WSO Open Healthcare Server so that uh, for the regulatory requirement, this can be uh, just, uh, you need to plug and uh, plug it to your application in order to available uh, it to your users. So uh, I will be uh, now uh, going through the next uh, workflow step, which is the consent requisition. So once the consent policies are defined, so they should be available uh, to the third party application developers to use them for their applications. So in the consent requisition flow, uh, the app developers can uh, create an app in the Open Healthcare developer portal uh, and uh, assign the consent policies for the application uh, that are requested from the application users. So in this flow, application developer uh, will be able to customize the already available uh, consent policies for the uh, organization uh, admins. Uh, so uh, let's uh, briefly look at the, the developer portal. Uh, so here, this is the WC Open Healthcare developer portal where the uh, application developers come to uh, discover the APIs and they will uh, go uh, create an application to consume these APIs uh, to use uh, in their uh, fire requirements. So once they uh, they can uh, they are building an application, they can try out and they can consume these fire APIs. And also once they have uh, uh, created an application, there's uh, this consents uh, be where uh, the available uh, the organizational consent policies would be available to the application developer uh, to uh, enable uh, them to uh, assign it to their application. So in, in this application, we have already uh, assigned this, uh, the CMS rule based uh, consent policy, which will take uh, this uh, uh, file uh, data and those are make, um, made as match. Uh, from the from the patient should be mandatory for these fields. Otherwise, uh, it should the application. So uh, likewise, uh, so all the available uh, uh, the defined uh, consent policies are available within this uh, uh, within this uh, developer portal to the application developer to assign to their application. Likewise, you can simply assign it and you can just uh, edit it uh, based on its mandatoriness. And also you can uh, uh, mark if you don't uh, want any of the defined consents, consent uh, attributes uh, to be available to your uh, consent policy. So uh, that's about the consent requisition. So I will be uh, going to the uh, uh, the next flow, which is the consent collection flow. Uh, so 
which is basically uh, the flow to uh, capture the uh, patient or member consent when sharing health data through a third party application. So this flow is also called as act of consent where the patients or members who use the app can review and decide which consent policy to, uh, to uh, accept uh, and share with the application. And uh, we have introduced two ways uh, to collect the consent from the, uh, the patients or member users. So basically, uh, we have a dedicated user health care portal where the, app, uh, the patients or members can log in and they can uh, discover the applications that they are using and they can uh, provide the consents then and there. So those consents will be uh, uh, stored in a uh, centralized uh, DB and then uh, uh, we have uh, the uh, other flow which is the on the go consent flow where when you uh, access the third party application our open health authorizer sir will uh, direct you to a consent management consent view uh, where then uh, from that pop up the user will be able to provide the consents uh, from then and there, so that this that they, those concerns also will be stored in the same uh, centralized DB. So if I show you uh, uh, the the user self care portal that we provide, so here in this portal, uh, the users will be able to manage their user uh, related details. They, are, they can view their sessions and also they can. Uh, uh, manage their consents that they are give, give, giving to their applications that they are using. So in this section, you can see that uh, for this application, uh, this user has uh, given uh, for, the, for the CMS uh, patient access API uh, data consent policy. And uh, here also user can uh, uh, define a time bound uh, for the consent policy so that uh, authorization will take care of it and it will revoke it uh, after the validity period. So also they can update the consents that they have given to the application and also they can revoke it at any time. So uh, the last flow is the consent enforcement flow. So where are the, uh, the WSCO Open Healthcare Fire Server will uh, take the, uh, retrieve the user's consents and uh, uh, make the uh, consent decision based on the user's consent and it will enforce the, uh, the consent decision on the, the file payloads that are shared, that are returned to the, that are shared with the application. So basically, uh, so this is taken care by the WC Open Healthcare Authorization Server. Uh, and it is very flexible uh, with the uh, five payloads. So uh, let's go to a brief demo, uh, which we will uh, go through a sample application uh, and uh, show you how the consent uh, workflow uh, has been implemented within the WSD Open Healthcare platform. So uh, this is an uh, this is a sample lab that we have developed. Uh, this is called Insurance One. Uh, this is basically a Smart on Fire application. It is uh, based on the implementation guide, the Smart on Fire implementation guide. And this will consume uh, the Fire APIs from the WC Open Healthcare Fire Server. And it will basically uh, retrieve the patient uh, demographics data and the explanation of benefit data uh, from the uh, for, for the uh, patient user. So uh, if I go to the uh, login section, so it will uh, prompt the uh, login for the authorization server. So now we can see uh, that uh, this uh, the for this application uh, the the CMS. Uh, based uh, rule-based consent policy has been popped up. Uh, and it is since it is mandatory, user doesn't have flexibility to uh, uh, take uh, for a granular level, but he can 
uh, deny it or uh, or he can proceed to share the data with the, this data with the application and also the user can uh, provide the uh, the time duration for this consent to be valid and uh, then it will the authorization server will be taken care of the, the automatic revocation after the validity validity expiration so uh, then i will be continue to the application so now the patient data has been uh, populated so in this button uh, if i click on this button this should uh, uh, retrieve the explanation of benefit data for this user and so this is the that explanation of benefit data um, so if i can see the request is uh, standard based uh, explanation of benefit api and all the uh, explanation of benefit data related to this user has been uh, returned to this application in the file format so if i uh, uh, go to the user self care portal so in the to the consents view so you can also see that consent has been updated here and let's do it or let's do a consent revocation from from here and let's see how the application behaves uh, from our authorization service da uh, data so i will be revoking the consent for the uh, cms uh, patient access uh, consent policy and then uh, i'll be just uh, reloading the application so that now we can see the patient data is not being returned to this application from uh, the fire, fire server and also if i uh, uh, take uh, retrieve the explanation of benefit data uh, it will not return uh, any of the explanation of benefit data uh, on the user so uh, here so let's see uh, so in this use case we have seen how uh, we can enable the consent management for the cms regulatory rule and let's see uh, uh, an example how we can use more fine grained more custom consent policy and how the consent enforcement happen there so uh, uh, first, I'll be uh, uh, going to the this uh, uh, developer portal, and I'll be uh, uh, I'll be removing the this consent purpose since I'm going to uh, demonstrate a custom consent purpose. So I'll be using uh, this these consent policies, this custom uh, explanation of benefit data, the custom patient data. So in here. In this each policy, uh, in in the custom EOB data policy, will uh, will take only the data uh, from the user uh, for these data elements uh, that are defined, and the, you can find the definition here. And also the uh, the application user can uh, mark its uh, mandatoriness or uh, optionalness from here and update it. And also you can see in the custom patient data, we will be uh, uh, considering these data from the user to be shared with the application. And let's see how these consent uh, policies will be prompted to the user, user for this application uh, for that uh, same insurance and application flow. So uh, I'll be now logging out to uh, showcase you. So uh, now I'm logging to the application. So now you can see the, those custom uh, consent policies have been popped up to the uh, application user. And now uh, let's say I'm giving uh, this, all these fields, uh, the consent. And also I don't want my contact number to be shared with the uh, with the application and uh, let's continue to the uh, application so now you can see the patient's contact details are not being uh, sent here uh, for the application and also then i'll be uh, uh, loading the the expansion of benefit data for this user and if i go to the request view uh, 
as you can see now, uh, the only the data that has been defined there has been re returned uh, to the application. So uh, if I just go to the uh, the user self care portal, and if I just decide to uh, uh, not to share my prescription uh, explanation of benefit record uh, to this application, so as the same user, I'm I'm going to update this the data. And I'm, I'm going to click the update on the consent that I have already given. So now if I uh, reload the application and uh, if I uh, see the consent uh, has been enforced on the explanation of benefit, the prescription data, and it is not available uh, for the application now, since I have been changed the Consents uh, for the uh, for the application for the application from the user portal. So uh, that's the uh, that's a very brief uh, demo of the uh, the 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 capabilities of the WC consent management uh, feature. So uh, I'll be uh, handing over to uh, Nirmal uh, to summarize what we have been uh, talking today. So. Or to you, Nirma. Yeah, uh, thanks, Samira. Thanks for the uh, great demo. Uh, I hope everyone got to see uh, the solution uh, in a very short time period. Uh, but uh, just to summarize uh, what we have discussed today, so we discussed, uh, we will explain the consent management is a critical to using your interoperability solution. Uh, we looked at the CMS final, final rule. Uh, and how you know what are the uh, consent related uh, rules that it has enforced on you as a payer organization and we uh, discussed the importance of thinking beyond the uh, regulation uh, uh, so that you can uh, start leveraging uh, this opportunity uh, to generate more uh, and more revenue uh, to your organization uh, and you got a sense about WS2's open healthcare solution as well through the uh, session. Uh, we learned uh, what features are important in a consent management solution. Uh, and uh, you basically saw uh, the WS2's uh, consent management solution as well. So, uh, more things. Uh, and I think we can move to the next slide. Uh, we have, we have a I think, quick poll uh, for you. Uh, if we can take a few seconds and answer it, uh, that will uh, be great for. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, we'll keep it for a few more seconds and then we'll basically take up the questions. If you have any questions, you can send them through the Q&A tab uh, in your uh, Zoom uh, panel. Okay, uh, so we have three questions. Uh, first question is, what's the uh, relationship between consent management and scopes? Uh, does the uh, system handle API scopes? Yes, uh, to answer your question, uh, Yes, we do support uh, OAuth scopes. And uh, when it comes to the uh, Smart on Fire specification, uh, it uh, clearly mentions, it clearly mentioned what are the scopes that we, you know, we have to support. Uh, and uh, WSO2 uh, Open Healthcare Solution supports uh, OAuth scopes. Uh, and as a payer organization, you can define them. And when, when a, a third party application requests those scopes, uh, when they uh, generate uh, the uh, access tokens, uh, you can uh, decide to uh, grant them uh, based on the uh, fine-grained access control rules. So there's no uh, uh, direct re relationship between uh, the scopes uh, that uh, I just explained and the consent management. Uh, so the consent management solution that we've explained is mainly about giving you the ability to control the uh, uh, business data. Uh, that's the, uh, the health data, uh, basically uh, the, uh, 
that are represented in the fire message format. So with both scopes, you can really control uh, the uh, health data, uh, but you can control the access uh, to different APIs, uh, etc. There's another question based on your experience. Uh, do you think uh, the uh, CMS will add more security requirements in the future, especially around consent management? Uh, what sort of features might be requested in the future? Yeah, so we definitely believe uh, this is not the end of the regulations and CMS will uh, in, enforce uh, other rules as well in coming years. Uh, that's our expectation. And uh, in the rule, they have clearly mentioned uh, with respect to the consent management uh, that since there's no widely adopted specification right now uh, to uh, you know, have consent management implemented to fire data elements level, uh, that's the reason they haven't, they haven't enforced it uh, on this particular uh, rule. Uh, but they have clearly mentioned that they are uh, actively looking into it and they are working with HHS, et cetera, to uh, come up with that standard. And uh, our uh, you know, expectation is that they would come up uh, with the, another uh, rule uh, that will basically cover the uh, consent management piece. This is another question. Uh, the fire survey implementation is that a standalone uh, WS2 product? We have documentation for it. Uh, so the uh, fire server we have implemented on top of WS2 uh, products, uh, especially the WS2 API manager, the API gateway, uh, the uh, enterprise integrator, the integration layer, and also the uh, CIAM solution that we have. Uh, currently, the solution uh, that we have built is uh, closed source, so uh, we don't uh, have uh, the source code of it opened up, uh, but the documentation uh, uh, can be provided to you uh, upon a request. invite you to uh, reach out to us so that we can provide you with a managed uh, deployment as well for, it, for you to try uh, the solution in more detail and just for everyone's information like in this webinar we covered only the consent management feature we uh, didn't get a chance to explain you the full uh, open healthcare solution so we've done that in past in few other webinars but uh, if you'd like to learn more uh, do reach out to us and we'd be happy to arrange one-on-one -on -one, uh, demos uh, presentations for you there's another question uh, where basically someone is asking uh, whether he can, uh, can I uh, integrate uh, your consent management feature, the data uh, with the WSO2 member portal, with, with uh, uh, their organizations, pay organizations member portal. Yes, you can do that. Uh, what we have done here is uh, you know, we have the consent management solution and there's a uh, REST API that we have exposed. So uh, the user self-care portal that you uh, seen in the demo, that is built basically called in those uh, REST APIs. So you can integrate this with your existing member portal and basically uh, uh, connect uh, to our REST APIs and get the same uh, set of features uh, that you've seen in the demo. Yeah, if not, I think we can wrap up. Uh, Mike, uh, Michael, do you want to take it from here? Sure, thank you, Nirmal. Well, um, before we break, um, I want to invite everyone to um, try our APIs, which you can do. I'm going to put the link in the chat uh, for you. Um, you can uh, use that link to uh, come over to our sandbox. There is a guide for its uh, use to help you with that. If you have any questions, of course, we're willing, more than willing to help you um, with it. And if you have any questions uh, that occur to you after the um, 
webinar is concluded. As you review the recording, uh, please feel free to reach out and uh, we can arrange one-on-one -on -one, um, conversations with you. Um, uh, if you wanna flip over to, there we go, okay. Um, okay, I think that wraps it, everyone. Um, thanks for attending and uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar.